What's happening, ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man, and welcome to today's well, today's um, delayed edition of All Elite Review. Um, we're actually going to get two episodes of All Elite Review today um, because uh, I didn't have one last week because I was uh, not feeling too good, to say the least. Uh, so I was going to do it on. I was going to release it earlier this week, but I said eh, I'll just wait for. The next Sunday and give it and uh, release two episodes. So here we go. Uh, today's episode, well, today's first episode of All Eight Review is featuring uh, Fight for the Fallen, uh, which took place um, about a week and a half ago, and uh, completely obliterated NXT in the ratings. And then the next episode of Dynamite uh, basically did even more so. <laughs> so uh, while NXT certainly um, was able to be successful with their Great American Bash counter-programming Fighter Fest. Uh, the problem is they didn't really have anything else, you know, to kind of keep the train going, and so AEW has pretty much, you know, retaken uh, command in that aspect. <clears throat> so, as a result of that, um, Tony Khan um, decided, hey, you know what? For this coming. Uh, week's episode of AEW Dark, they're going to have a mind-boggling 12 matches! Like, I realize that they've been giving us a high number of matches on Dark last month or two, but Jesus, 12 matches? That's a lot of matches, man. Uh, but hey, that's fine with me, so... There you go. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get into this uh, Fight for the Fallen review and uh, breeze through it, because I still have another review to get through. Um, the first match, of course, was for the AEW TNT Championship, which seems to be the theme of the, of the last couple weeks, uh, with the TNT Championship being the first match on the card. Uh, and, and it was the same thing uh, on the this previous episode of Dynamite that I'm going to be reviewing afterwards. Uh, here it was uh, Cody uh, against Sonny Kiss. Uh, highlights of the match, Cody uh, hit a pump kick to start the match, hit a disaster kick, locked in kind of a master lock, the full Nelson hold. Um, but Sonny countered, came back with an exploder, a flying Frankensteiner, and a Matrix-style head scissors takedown. Um, he hit his own version of the crossroads, only got a two count, hit a very nice 450 splash. Only got a two count. Cody hit an Alabama slam on the ramp. Uh, hit the dense fire, which is the vertebra breaker. Uh, only got a two count though. Hit a superplex into a crossface. Uh, Sonny hit a nice uh, roundhouse kick, but uh, Cody would spike him, and I mean spike him, with a crossroads and gets the three count and the victory. I gave this match three and a half stars out of five. Uh, the next match was the first ever match between the Lucha Brothers and FTR. So, um, it started out with uh, Dax, Harwood, and Pentagon going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Um, Pentagon hit a super kick on Dax. FTR hit like a backbreaker elbow drop on Phoenix. Um, Lucha Brothers with a super kick party on Cash. Uh, Cash hit a power slam counter on Pentagon, which looked really nice. Uh, Dax hit a backdrop driver on Phoenix for a two count. Um, there were a few miscommunications in this match, but I think it was mainly due to, like, over-exuberance. Because I'm pretty sure the two teams were excited to, like, face each other in a, in, a, in a match. Just, you know, one team against one team instead of, like, an eight-man tag. Although that eight-man tag was pretty good. Um, uh, FDR hit, like, an inverted bomb bulldog combo on Phoenix for a two-count. Um, <laughs> at this point, both teams were just countering each other's moves. Uh, going at each other like form shots and super kicks and you know shit like that. Pentagon had a nice sling blade on Cash. Cash had a diving tornado DDT on Pentagon. Uh, Phoenix had a flying crossbody on uh, Cash and then hit a tiger faint roundhouse kick on Dax. But then uh, Dax pulls uh, Phoenix's mask off uh, and hits a small package for the three count and the victory. And of course, Phoenix, you know, Mexican tradition, you know, with the uh, the mask. He, he was struggling, you know, to cover his face um, as they, uh, as the uh, Lucha Brothers tried to uh, get out of there. <laughs> uh, I gave this match three stars out of five. Uh, afterwards, 
Um, White, uh, the Young Bucks super kicked the Butcher and the Blade, um, who had, who still had the keys to the uh, to FTR's truck. But um, they super kicked Butcher and the Blade and returned FTR's truck uh, keys to them. Uh, this, of course, would lead to a Falls Count Anywhere match between the Butcher and the Blade and the Young Bucks on the next episode of Dynamite. Uh, King Omega comes out with beer as a truce to FTR, but then FTR just pours the beer all over him, um, which sets Omega off, and uh, looks like that's going to be one of the catalysts for his heel turn, as we'll see later on. Uh, Y2J and the Inner Circle come out for a promo. He calls himself the Demo God. You know, after explaining, you know, the demo and all that shit. Uh, Orange Cassidy comes out through one of the uh, arena entranceways. And Watch Watcher Jay says that a rematch isn't going to happen. Uh, Cassidy kind of goes uh, thumbs down and uh, drops a bunch of orange juice on <laughs> top of the inner circle. And uh, Jericho was given a towel to try to drive himself off and it was actually an, an Orange Cassidy towel. Which really pissed him off. That was pretty funny. And then the next match, I actually struggled with what to give this match as far as, you know, how many stars because um, this was the match of the night. Uh, it was a trios match between Jurassic Express and The Elite. And if you've been paying attention to my own personal rankings, this was the number one ranked team against the number two ranked team, the number one ranked Jurassic Express against the number two ranked Elite. So this was a pretty big match and it ended up having that big match feel. Um, there was a great exchange between Nick and Jungle Boy, which was really good. Um, great high flying offense by both teams in this one. Uh, FTR joins Hangman at the bar who was watching the match backstage. Uh, Jericho's commentary was funny as all hell because he had joined commentary. Um, Jungle Express's triple team springboard destroyer was fucking sick as hell. Um, but at the end of the day, Omega hit the one winged angel on Marco Stunt for the three count and the victory. And I literally struggled to uh, come up with a rating for this one because the match was so good. Um, but at the end of the day, I decided I will give this match the full five stars out of five. That's right. Um, first five star match since uh, Double or Nothing. Um, didn't think I would give a five star rating to a sh to a, a Dynamite show uh, or a Wednesday night show that didn't have a crowd, like a true crowd. But here we are. <laughs> that trio's match was awesome. And then after the match, Omega starts attacking Marco out of frustration. Um, Showing signs of that heel turn. Uh, Sheeta is interviewed backstage saying that she is more than willing to take on all comers. And then uh, John Moxley talks about how he will tear uh, Brian Cage's arm out in the main event. So then we have our fourth match, which is a tag match between Allie and Brandy Rose, down dubbed as the uh, Nightmare Sisters, taking on Kenzie Page and MJ Jenkins. It was a pretty meh match. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It was just meh. You know, it was just, it felt like a filler match. Uh, Allie hit the eye of the storm on Jenkins for the three and the victory. Um, it really seems like they're trying to get the women's tag division off the ground. Which, may, you know, it's like, well, maybe they should focus on the <coughs> women's singles division first before they do that. Although, uh, I, I think they announced... This past week on Dynamite, I don't think it was during Fight for the Fallen, but uh, I think this past week on Dynamite, they did announce that they were going to hold a uh, Women's Tag Team Cup Championship, the Deadly Draw, as they're calling it. So, uh, it'll be 16 women, 8 teams. Um, I mean, not really much more. There isn't really much more known than that. They haven't really uh, gone to uh, specifics as of yet. But um, we're gonna have to wait and see what that, how that kind of comes about. They'll probably uh, release some more information on this next coming episode of Dynamite. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then Nyla Rose reveals that her manager is Vicky Guerrero. Excuse me. <laughs> Great. Now have to listen to that shit on Wednesday nights. Uh, and then the main event was the AEW World Championship match between Brian Cage and John Moxley. Uh, this was a physical match between these two. 
I'm actually working on the surgically repair arm of uh, Brian Cage. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he had uh, he had torn a bicep. Um, he was out for uh, several months, which kind of delayed his uh, AEW appearance. Um, but uh, Cage showcasing his power and agility, and Moxley uh, knowing that you know he was going to have to try to do something different here, started uh, showcasing his uh, MMA training. Um, and then um, eventually Mox managed to get Cage into like an inverted armbar, um, and uh, Cage, uh, of course, was not going to tap here. Uh, so Taz was forced to throw in the towel. Uh, which would effectively give a technical submission uh, to Moxley. And some people were like, well, maybe they backed themselves into a booking, they booked themselves into a corner, you know, because of, um, you know, Brian Cage coming in and being dominant. Well, they tried to say the same thing about Moxley and Brody Lee, but they uh, found a way out of it because, uh, much like this time, um, in the Brody Lee encounter, um, Brody Lee never physically tapped out. Okay, my Xbox is talking to me again. And um, and he never verbally submitted. And this was the same thing here with Cage. He never physically tapped out. He never visually tapped out. He never verbally submitted. Uh, it was uh, Taz throwing in the towel that forced the match uh, to be stopped. So Cage is still technically looked at as being a strong character. Um, because he never tapped, he never physically submitted, or he never he never verbally submitted. So there's that. Um, so Moxley retains the title, of course. Uh, Cage attacks Mox afterwards, but then Darby Allen makes his return and attacks Cage uh, to end the show. And I gave this match 3.25 stars out of five. Um, but as per the usual, uh, AEW puts on a very watchable show that doesn't insult your fucking intelligence like WWE does. Uh, and the quality of wrestling is pretty good. And uh, that trios match, that was the cat's ass. <laughs> that was that was a pretty damn good match. And it's like, yeah, I have to give it five stars. So there you go. My final rating for Fighter uh, Fight for the Fall in 2020, um, I'll give it a seven and a half out of ten. It's a pretty good show uh, with some uh, good quality wrestling, in my opinion. Um, and uh, that's pretty much going to do it uh, for this edition of All Elite Review. Um, here are my updated rankings after Fight for the Fallen. Um, and I'll be back later on today for um, the second episode of All Elite Review. Uh, this time talking about this past edition, past Wednesday's edition of AEW Dynamite. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, which is later on today, this is the Packer Man signing out. See you later. You better like and subscribe or face the consequences. You have been warned.